Hey, welcome to this video. Today we're going to build this weather application using React. Using a type ahead, we can search for a city and then it will retrieve the weather information of that city for us. We're going to display the temperature, some description, as well as an icon. I think this will be good practice for those of you learning React as well as interacting with APIs. With that said, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and let's get started. So I have git patch open and we're going to do the mpx command and do create React app template to create our application and I'm going to call it weather app. Once it finishes, let's open up the project, pick whichever ID you want. I'm going to use Visual Studio code. So I'm going to do CD into weather app and I'm going to do code dot and this is going to open Visual Studio code for me. Okay. Now that it opened, I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal. So let's click on new terminal. And there's a couple of things we're going to install. Let's do npm install and let's do material dash UI slash core. And let's do material dash UI slash lab. And we're going to use this specifically for our type ahead. Let's press enter. That's going to take a little while. So in the meantime, I want to show you the weather API that we're going to be using. Head over to openweathermap.org and create an account if you don't have one already. Once you create an account, you will get this API key under your username. And with this key, we're going to be able to request the weather for any given city. Now we can explore the API by clicking API. And right here we can see the different types of calls that we can make. We're going to go with current weather data. Click on API doc. And here we can see what the request looks like for a city name. So basically we'll copy this and make a call to this URL and we'll put the city name and our API key. Same if we have city name and state or city name, state and country code. In our case, we're going to go all the way down and we're going to be calling it by city ID. And for that, we will need to have a, to know the ID of the city. So they provide a file with all the cities that they support. And in essence, it has the ID. So if you click right here on city that list that min that Jason that GZ, you can extract it. And that way you can have the file. Now, if you don't want to extract the file, I'm going to have the link to the repo. So you can just go to the repo and download it from the repo. Now I know this is a lot, so let's head over to this other tab I have open here. And this is material UI and this is the autocomplete we're going to be using. So right here, if you see an example of how it works where you can start typing, you can see how it updates. So this is essentially what we want. Let's copy this example and head back to our code. Cool. So we have our packages installed. And the first thing I'm going to do is drop that file we just talked about. I'm going to drop it inside source. There you go. And we can see what the data looks like. We can see that there's an ID a name state, if it has it and a country, of course, and as long as some coordinates and that's pretty much it. So I'm going to close this because this file is pretty big. Right, let's start off by opening app JS and I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. Okay. Here, I'm just going to do const app and I want to do return and I'm going to paste that code we just copied. Okay, let's clean this up a little bit so we can give it a class name. Let's call it search. We can get rid of options for now get rid of this. We can even get rid of style. We don't need it since we have class name. Let's go ahead and do a few imports that we need. So we're going to be needing the text field that we're using right now. So we're going to import that from material UI core. And also we're going to import autocomplete from material UI lab. There you go. And we're going to use a couple of hooks. We're going to use use effect. Oops. 
as well as the use state. And this is from React. I have a typo right here. There you go. Let's update the name of the label so we can call it search. And we also need a on select. This way we can get the input from the user. This is going to be an event. And this is all we need. Now we can import all this stuff from that file to a variable. So we can do const locations equal to require. This would be city that list that min that JSON. There you go. And then let's use the use state to have all the cities. And this will be for the options. So cities set cities. equal to use state and let's give it an initial value for you, for those of you not familiar this is a use state hook this is the initial value we're giving it so in this case it's just an empty array we're going to call this function to set this value and that's pretty much how it works and then we're going to set to the options to be the cities now, keep in mind, this file is pretty large, so there's definitely better ways to get this data instead of just you know, lo loading everything at once in this variable. For, for this case and for this tutorial, that's, that's going to work fine. Let's go ahead and save this file and open up our app CSS file. And pretty much, I'm going to... What was going on here? Okay, pretty much I want to delete everything here. And then in body, we're going to give it background color and I have some color here. So E D C F B. There you go. Okay. And that's it. And then for the search, let's do a margin. Let's do two pixels and auto. So this will center it and have two uh, pixel margin on top and on the bottom. And then we can give it a width and we can say 300, 300 pixels. Let's have a border radius and four pixels. And let's do some background color and then we can do like ghost white or something. All right, let's save this. Let's do NPM start on our terminal and check it out. Okay, so our application is up and we have right here our type ahead. And we can click on this little arrow and the search gets out of the way. So let's get rid of that. And also I want to get rid of this little arrow. So let's go back to our app, but this is looking good. So I want to go back to app.js and on material documentation, there's a field that we can set, which is free solo. And that's going to get rid of that little triangle if you don't want it. And then instead of Having label search, I'm going to change this to placeholder. When it comes to the type ahead options, we would like to show the city name, comma, state if it exists, comma, and then the country. So let's create a field inside cities or inside our locations. I mean, that has some kind of description field. And this description field is going to be exactly that the name of the city, comma, the state, if it exists, comma, the country. And for that, we can use the use effect. When the app first load, we're going to do this. And that way we have it ready. So we can do use effect. And for those of you that are not familiar with the use effect, the use effect first takes a function. So this is a function it takes. And the second is a parameter. So here is an array of the dependencies, meaning anything we put in that array, every time that changes, that function, this function right here gets called. If you leave it empty, that means there are no dependencies. So it's just going to run once and that's it. And that's exactly what we want. We want it to run once. So we're going to go to locations that map. So this is going to go and loop through every location. And we want to update a little bit. So we want to add a description field, which this object doesn't have. 
and we're going to set it equal to so we're going to say l dot name dot to uppercase just to have it uppercase that way whenever we do some comp comparison and just to show the city itself so it's consistent and so we have it uppercase then we're going to check the state if it exists then we want to have a comma and have the state else we just don't want to show anything so it's just an empty string and then we can do comma and then we all always going to have a country so we can do l that country and that's pretty much it at the end we just need to make sure we return that l so just to recap so we have locations which we loaded from our file we're going to loop through that location so we're going to go through every location and we're going to add a description field this description field is just going to be the name of that location we're going to check the state if this state exists that means we're going to have a comma and we're going to add the state else we're just going to have an empty string and then we're going to have a comma and then we're going to have the location that country and that's pretty much it now let's scroll down a little bit and let's fill up this unselect so first thing we're going to do is let's just get the value and that's going to be equal to e that target that value that to uppercase and this is essentially what the user is typing on that type ahead so here we have the value so we're going to give them some options whenever we have a value of length greater than or equal to three and you can change this to whatever number you want but this is a big list so just having like just a few characters is just going to make things a little slower unnecessarily so if it's greater or equal to three we're going to do something with it so we're going to start looking for possible cities that the user might be looking for so we can do const possible locations it's equal to locations that filter we pass in l where l description that includes that value so basically we're checking that if the description has any other value that the user is typing and if so we just want to get we just want to get 10 so we can do slice 0 to 10 because there, there could be a lot more and you can change these numbers however you like so you can do 20 or you can do 5 whatever is your preference so I'm just going to do 10 and now that we have those possible locations, we just can set the cities. So we can do set cities, possible locations that map. Be sure to just get that string. You don't want to pass in the whole object. So we can do L that description. And that's it. And set cities, like we said before, right here, we call this function we pass in a value in this case we're passing an array of descriptions and this variable is going to get set since this variable is going to get set then options will have those options so we should be able to see that on the type ahead so let's go to a browser and check this out okay so we're back at the browser and we're going to check if the type ahead actually works now so we click on it and i'm going to start typing so say i type new and i start getting all those options look at that so there should be 10 of those. I'm going to do space, and you can see how things change until I can just select what I want. Pretty cool. Let's head back to our code now, and let's try to make a request to the API and retrieve the weather for that city. Well, and how do we know whenever the user wants to look for a city? Basically, whenever the description matches the value the user is, is putting, that's where we're going to look for the weather of that city. So we can do cons selected equal to locations 
dot find and we can do l oops l that description equal to value so whenever these match that means that we have a city so we can just set city and we can pass in we can pass in selected we haven't created this yet so let's go up and just create another use state and we can remove the initial state and change the name to city and set city so basically whenever we set this value this is the city that we're going to be looking for the weather so here we find location if the description matches the value from the user that means we're going to get that location and we're going to set it as the city and this is going to be the whole object meaning we're going to have the id of the city state country everything and once the user has picked that city we can just make a request to that endpoint and get the weather information so back out of the documentation let's copy this api call click on this button to copy it and notice there's also other options such as language you want to pick and units and so forth we're going to get the units uh, we're going to use metric and metric is going to display there you go it's going to display our temperature in celsius so let's do that and also let's head over and don't forget to get your key as well so I copied over our URL and the key, in this case, my key, make sure you have your key. And I wanna do a quick test, make sure that this works. So I'm gonna copy this over here, put it as the app ID. And also what we can do is add that units metric that I was mentioning before. So we can do that with, we can do an N here, say units equal to metric. And just for t testing purposes, we can update this. And I don't know, I'm gonna try to guess some city ID. And I'm gonna copy this, and I'm gonna head over to the browser and test this out. Okay, so I pasted the URL in the browser, and we're getting 404 and saying city not found. So let me go back to our code and try to find an ID that would actually work. Okay, so it was a little slow, but I opened the city.list.min.json file, and I'm gonna copy the first ID I see here. And let's try that one. Okay, so I replaced the ID of five that we had before with this ID now. And now we get a response. So now we can see that we have the weather information, which has a description saying overcast clouds as an icon. And we're about to see this in a little bit, but you'll see that it has like some number and some uh, letter, and this represents day or night. So the icon actually changes depending if it's daylight or it's nighttime and then also has temperature. So with this information, now we just need to try to, or now we need to actually fetch this information from our React application and display it to our users. Now that we know that retrieving the weather information works, let's use the fetch API to retrieve that information. So basically we're gonna do a use, another use effect. Let's do use effect and let's pass in a function. And now we want this to run every time city changes. Basically every time the user picks a city, we want to run that function. So first of all, let's check that city exists. So let's do city. And in here we can do fetch. And we're gonna copy this. And we're gonna paste it in here. There you go. Now let's change this ID from five that we have, have hard coded here. And let's do the city ID. There you go. And then we, we're gonna get a response. And from that response, we're gonna do response that JSON. And then after that, we're gonna have our results. 
And here is where we're going to actually get the information that we want from that result. So in this, in our case, we're going to get the temperature, the description, and we're also going to store the icon. We're going to use the use state to store the weather information. So we can do up here, const weather set weather equal to use state. And let's initialize it with an empty object. There you go. So done here, we can now take advantage of that. And I'm going to actually auto format this. There you go. And we can do set weather. And then we're going to have a temperature. And this is going to be from the result that main that temp. And we're going to have description. And this is going to come from result that weather that description. And lastly, we're going to store the icon. So it's going to be result that weather at zero that icon. There you go. And I'm going to do semicolon here. And here, actually not here, because here we're going to do this do a catch. Just in case there's an error, we can do console dot log error and do e there you go i want to get rid of these comments so we don't need them anymore so now we have we're making a request to our api and actually I forgot to do this so this should be https that there you go so now we're making a request to our api passing in the api id and the city ID that we want, we're going to get a response, parse it as JSON, we're going to get a result, and then set that weather information. So this is going to be in result that main attempt, result that weather, the first uh, location description, and same for the icon. And we're going to store all that, all of that information. And if you have trouble remembering where these, these things are, the temperature, description, and icon, you can always do a console log of result and check it out. And now that we have the weather, we just need to display it to the user. So let's scroll down a little bit. And right here, we can start by doing a little diff here. And we can say it's hidden. If we don't have a weather dot temperature. There you go. Take away that. And in here we can have a diff and let's have a class name. Let's call it temperature. And we can have a little style just to change it. If temperature is below zero or equal to zero. So we can say style. We can say color. And we can say weather that temperature. Let me break this down. is below or equals to zero. If so, we're going to have purple. Else, let's do orange. There you go. Okay. And in here we can do weather that temperature. So we're going to display temperature like that. Let's go down a little bit more. There you go. And we can have a little line separate these so we, we can do an HR and down here we can do another diff and we can have a class name of description and we can do weather that description and that's it save this and let's go to our app that CSS and implement or do this description and temperature. Okay, so let's start with temperature. So we can do temp for sure. There you go. We can do margin top 100 pixels. And let's do text align. Let's do center. And let's do font size. 
and that's too large. There you go. Next, let's do the HR. Let's set the width to 30 pixels. And let's do the description. And this, let's do text align to center. And let's do font size. And let's do X large. There you go. All right, let's save this and let's head over to our browser. Okay, and so at the browser, let's start typing. So I'm gonna try Miami, Florida. And we get 24.1, we get the line, but we don't get a description. Okay, so let's check that out. And also let's add like some degree here and say this is Celsius so the user knows. Okay, so other than that, looking pretty good. So. Let's see why we don't have a description. So let's get back to the code. Okay, so the first thing I usually look for are typos. So let's make sure we didn't just type anything. So whether that description that looks good to me and it highlights all of this stuff. So that looks good. Description and this was not. Okay, so right here, pretty easy. Description, there you go. That should fix our description. And now let's update the temperature to have a degree and say it says that it's Celsius. And for the degree symbol, so we can do a span here. And you can look, you can go the symbol up, but it's just this number 176 semicolon. There you go. And then we can just put the C as Celsius. That's pretty much it. So let's go to the browser and check that out. Okay, so now as soon as I get back to the browser, I can see that it says overcast clouds. So let's change this to New York City. Let's see what we get. Okay, and we say it says clear sky. Okay, so we're almost done here. The only thing we're missing is just put the little icon here so that it shows nicely. Okay, so to get the icon, let's go back to the documentation. So we're here at so we let's say let's go from the beginning. So if I click on API, go to the documentation, we were here before when we got the Pi CD ID. Right, so if you keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down around here, there's going to be some documentation on list of weather condition codes. So let's open this up, and it says how to get icon URL. So here's an example. So if we open this up, we can see that we get this little icon, and this icon changes depending on the weather, right? And we have that icon on our request. So we're going to use this URL to request the icon that we need. So let's copy this and let's head back to our code. So under weather description, we can open here image and let's close it right away. So let's do some description, say weather icon and let's have a source. There you go. You paste this in here. We can actually do HTTPS and let's change this hard coded icon to our weather that icon. There you go. I'll format this. Let me save this and let's head over to app CSS real quick. And we can add a little bit of CSS styling to this. So let's do margin. Auto, just so that it centers and display. Let's do block. There you go. Save that and let's head back to our browser. And there you go. We can see a little symbol here, New York City. Let's change to something else. Let's try this. So it says overcast clouds and it changes the icon. And basically, you can start testing out cities and see what you get pretty much. I actually had a lot of fun building this application and looking at the weather for different cities and comparing them. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about React and backend services, check out some of our other videos. If you haven't by now, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.